I tell you what, we're, we are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. And um, I'm just going to share from my heart this morning. We've, we've had an amazing, what, two weeks, I guess. I don't know. It's been cold. <laughs> I think that's the longest I've ever seen snow stick around, and, you know, like that. And, yeah. Huh? Snowmageddon. Snowdemic, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, Novid. Novid. Novid 21. Novid 21. My goodness, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get past uh, historic events. How about you? <laughs> except the glory revival. Yes, except the next greatest event is coming the glory revival. And uh, that is going to be historic. It will be the greatest revival the earth has ever encountered. It will hit every nation. And um, so we're in an awesome day. I tell you what. I, uh, and, you know, here's the other thing. Water, you know, always represents the Holy Spirit. And I'm thinking of, of all the flooding that's going on and stuff. Of course, the Lord didn't do that. But I think what we've seen in the physical, we're going to see in the spiritual. We're going to see the great Holy Spirit poured out like never, greater than ever before. It's already started. If you've watched, if you're following Mario Morello, California is experiencing a revival. And uh, Mario said it's greater than, than when the Jesus movement came. I don't know, some of you may not remember that, but I do. And man, I mean, youth was going from church to church and hippies were getting saved and giving their testimonies. And I mean, it was just uh, an amazing time. And then came the charismatic renewal. And, and uh, I mean, it was from every church, we'd all get together on weekends and we would just speak in tongues. We would pray for people. They'd get baptized in the Holy Spirit. They'd get healed. They'd get delivered. It was an amazing, amazing time. We led a Japanese lady to the Lord on one of those meetings and she didn't speak English. So we were, we were trying to think, how are we going to lead her to the Lord? And I thought, who has a Gideon Bible? Somebody had a Gideon Bible, and in the front they had in Japanese how to accept the Lord. So we handed it to her, and she read it, and when she got through, she just started smiling. She's patting her chest and pointing up to heaven and going like this, and we knew she got born again. So it was, it was that amazing. I mean, you could, uh, when we were at Melody Land, uh, Pastor Wilkerson, I, I think he could, he could get up and sing Yankee Doodle Dandy, and hundreds of people would come forward and get saved. It was just that incredible. And uh, when they bought, uh, uh, Melody Land was a, a Shakespeare theater in the surrounds, about, seated about 4,500 people. And attached to it was the largest bar in, in Orange County. It was huge. And, and uh, well, they started, uh, they bought the building, but not the bar area. But they would take their altar calls over into the ball area. And, and, uh, teach them right there in the bar area and pretty soon the bar closed down and they bought it and so anyway it's an incredible story of what God did and um, I had a hippie friend at John and um, he got so radically saved <laughs> he was in a Methodist church and you know I don't know if you remember that you have the offertory time and and then they come forward and they put the offering on the well he didn't have any money so he went up there and laid on the altar. <laughs> he just said, Lord, I'm offering myself to you. That was the end of the service. Let's just put it that way. Because in a Methodist church, what do you do with a hippie up there laying on the altar? You know, you just, you just shut the service down, you know. And we had another friend that, uh, he's in heaven now, but Bobby, or Bob Matherly, when he got saved, he was in, I think it was a Methodist church. I think it was, was a Methodist church. And all of a sudden, he just, the Spirit of the Lord, he just shouted as loud as he could, hallelujah. And the pastor had his notes, and they went flying all over the place. <laughs> Again, that was, that was shut this whole service down. You know, you don't go to churches like that and say hallelujah. Um, if you do, you say it quietly. And uh, amazing things happen when God's mixing messing things up and uh, he's messing up the religious system right now we will see the church 
come out. We'll see it come through repentance and come and jump into the joy of the Lord. And, but right here in this house is a remnant that your hearts are so perfect. I'm telling you what, God is so good. And uh, I was restudying Azusa Street. In fact, I went through several revivals. Red River Revival, the Cane Ridge Revival, the, the Muddy River Revival. I mean, just incredible what God did in these revivals. Azusa Street probably impacted the world greater than any of those revivals. And uh, a lot of what we do today, for instance, when we pray for people, praying in tongues over them, that started in Azusa Street. And, and uh, we do a lot of things today that came from that time and it spread all over the world. And uh, so, you know, the other thing is in Azusa Street, it was a little bitty old, probably maybe the size of this inside of this sanctuary. So they could like cram 500 people in there and that's it. That little building, Azusa Street, uh, Brother Seymour, they only had about 50 or 60 members of the church. That was it. But see, they were hosting the glory of God. So all the multitudes that were coming were coming from all over the world. And they were coming there, they were getting healed, saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, brought into humility. They said they would come in there and just fall on their face before God. And if anybody came in in pride, you know, those young, some young pastors would come and try and get up there because they had an open pulpit. And they'd fall under the power of God. And they'd get up a different person because God, when His glory was there, it was just... You didn't, you didn't come in there in any kind of flesh. But, but, uh, but they only had about 50 to 60, maybe 70 full-time members. But they hosted the world. So it had nothing to do with church growth. They weren't trying to build a big church. They were hosting the glory of God. And people were coming and going. I mean, they'd come from other countries and get baptized in the Holy Spirit and go back. And, and the revival spread all over the world like that. So they were hosting that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing. We really are. And I was reading some of the marks of revival. I wrote it down, marks of revival. So one of the things that happened at Azusa Street, it says they had, they had extended times of silence because the glory of God was resting on them. And in those times of silence, people would have visitations of heaven. They would receive prophetic words. Some of them would fall out under the power and be totally changed. We have been, one of the things that's always been a mark of this church is silence. Those times when, when Audrey Mack was here, she said, oh, she says, I miss this. Where you just sit and the presence of the Lord comes. She said, you don't, har she said, she couldn't remember the last church she'd ever been in that, that allowed that presence of the Lord to set on us. And I know that as we're doing the, the worship at the end, I, it's a purpose in that. And I know that the, when the presence of the Lord comes so strong, that's a time just to listen. It's a time for you personally. And I know some people aren't not used to sitting in the presence of God. And it's okay if you get up and leave. Nobody's going to look at you. In fact, nobody's looking at anybody at that moment. And all I want to say to you is, is that I don't, I'm not going to try and break that. I'm just going to let us sit. If you want to sit here all day, I don't care. As long as, but, but the main thing is we are hosting the presence of God. So we already have a mark of revival in our midst in this church. When God's I mean, His presence is here real, now, real strong, and that's what we're here to do. Azusa Street hosted the presence and glory of God, and so it wasn't a matter of growing big members; it was a matter of hosting. And they had people that were fifty to sixty people that were totally belonged to God, so that they could host and not mess up the presence of God. And the whole thing that broke up the Zeusa Street was other people coming in from, I mean, Charles Perman was one of them, and some of the big, big preachers came in and started attacking Brother Seymour. 
And then it, it just turned into a mess because of people. And uh, but Brother Seymour died in 1921, had a church of about 50 people, but they were the 50 people that had the character to host a revival. And um, it broke racism. Pastor, Pastor Seymour was a one-eyed uh, African-American, black man, uneducated. And, and God used these originally black brothers and sisters. It broke the racial barrier. It broke the, the, the gender barrier uh, for, in Azusa Street, women ministered, which in, back in those days, was, that was before women's suffrage even. Women couldn't even vote in those days. But it broke that. So you had racial barrier broken, gender barrier broken, uh, because when God starts moving, it, there is no more Gentile or Jew, male or female. It's God coming in the presence to save humanity and to heal and set free and deliver. So, man, I, I tell you what, we're in an awesome, awesome time. So I want, what I want to say, I want you to reverence when, that's, when, when God's presence comes like it always, it's, it's doing it more strong all the time. Take that time to say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. And we'll just let him do what he can do in our midst. And, and if, you, if you need to get up and go, get up and go. Nobody's going to be bothered by it. So anyway, this has been an amazing week, as you can tell. The three of our four buildings got flooded, and, and uh, we'll show a video of that. And, and, and thanking all of you who helped and, and everything, we'll show that. Uh, it's good to have Jennifer back with us this morning. <laughs> um, this past week has been an interesting week in my life. Uh, first started out last Monday, our water line in our main bathroom broke, flooded our bedroom, master bedroom, closet, about an inch and a half of water on our tile, and it just, of course, you know, went into the walls. And So anyway, we're, we're having a uh, big, uh, Dave came over and fixed the pipe for us, and Stanley Steamer's coming tomorrow to tear out, and, and Dave will come back and build in, and but here's the good news. It's going to be better than it was. Yes. And I'm telling you that with all the building that's going on here, it's going to be better than it was. Yeah. Man, I mean, we're going, to have, we're going to have new carpet and new paint and, and uh, uh, the parking lot. They can get started on that in the next week or two. It's going to be better than it was. And, and as a result of that, uh, it's getting ready for the Lord. We've had many times, some of you have been in this church for a while, it seems like when something physical happens, something spiritual follows it. So where there is a flood of water, there's going to be a flood of the Spirit. And it's going to be better than it was. And so when they're through with our house, it's going to be better than it was. It just is. And, and uh, we've got brand new carpet and praise God. And we always know this, whatever the enemy brings for harm, God turns it to good. And there's not a person in this place who hasn't gone through a traumatic time in your life. But have you noticed it's better now than it was before? Yeah. If you stay true to God, it'll be better. Like Marilyn Hickey said, you can get bitter or better. I've learned in every situation, when we come through it, it, it comes out we're better than it was before. It's better than it was. And so I just, that just kept ringing in me for all of you to know it's, it's going to be better than it was. How many of you have went through that power outage? Bless your hearts. We were fortunate. We did not have any power outage. We just had a water line break. So I guess it's a trade-off. I don't know. But I want to tell you something. Um, I watched this body, you guys come together, bless one another, and uh, Walton, Dave told me they went over, Rose lost her for a long time, and they said they went over there and she looked like a mummy. She was just all... <laughs> but Dave got a generator for her and got her some electricity. And how you all reached out to each other. Um, but on a personal note, and I, I'm saying this with all sincerity, I could be in heaven today. I'm serious. Or I could have a, a brain 
severe brain injury. I could have had a broken neck. I could have had every bone in my body broken. I mean, this was a dangerous thing that happened to me. And I didn't, it just yesterday, it just hit me. It just like hit me. Very emotional day. Um, <laughs> what happened was, Emma and I, we were at Nick and Tanya's, just having a good time, ordering some pizza, and just getting together as a family. And so Emma goes up the stairs, <clears throat> and that's okay, I was going with her, so I was just letting her go up. So, so we were coming down the stairs, and I, maybe a third of the way. Oh, Emma's my grand, our granddaughter, Justin and Kaylee's daughter. What? She's one year old. She turned a year old in January, or December 26th, so she's about year a year and two months old <clears throat> so little em and i we were coming back down the stairs and she was in front of me and i was holding her hands and we probably got a third of the way down so all of a sudden i i don't know if i slipped i don't but i was i fell and i i all i thought was i'm falling and emma's in front of me <laughs> so i turned so i wouldn't hit her the next thing I know, I'm laying down on the tile at the, about 15, 10, 12 steps down, hit the, 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 the sheetrock and knocked a hole in it with my head. Must have flipped over, hit the tile. And all I remember is laying there in severe pain, um, uh, couldn't respond to anything. Uh, Nick was the first one there, and then Justin was right behind him, and he got Emma, and she was fine. She said he was just, she was just sliding down the stairs with her hands. And, <laughs> so that's the, good, that's the good news. And you came down on your back. Yeah, I came down on my back. <laughs> but the thing was is that uh, if I'd have hurt my little grandbaby, <laughs> I couldn't handle that. All I knew is I had to not land on her. So next thing I know, Nick's there. And then Kaylee's at my head, Tanya's to my left, talking to me. I could hear people, but I couldn't respond. Could not respond. And Tanya and, and Kaylee kept saying, Dad, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I'd open my eyes and and then shut them, and I'd almost go into a deep, deep sleep. And they would shake me. Tanya was pounding on my chest. And finally, the EMTs got there, and, and, um, and they said, Mr. Van Winkle, squeeze your hands. I couldn't move them. They said, they took your foot like this and say, push on me. I couldn't, I couldn't move nothing. I couldn't move my feet, couldn't move my hands. And I'm sitting there. This is so surreal, because I'm, I'm there like on the inside, I'm saying, move feet move you know i was going to get up and i'm okay and i couldn't move and and um the way i was laying they thought i'd broke my leg i don't know i think it was cocked one way or something i don't know and um and the the emts they kept saying stay with us mr van Winkle. stay with us open your eyes and and um and i, I think tanya said don't move dad and i'm on the inside i'm saying i can't move <laughs> you know interesting what was going on with me but there, I did have a mild concussion when they did all the tests and stuff but I'm gonna tell you that on the ride in on the ambulance about halfway there a little left all of a sudden I started waking up I started waking up and I could move and I could talk and in fact uh, Dorothy was in the front of the ambulance and said uh, I guess his name was Austin and she said, is he talking? And he said, yeah, I can't shut him up. So <laughs> she said, well, he's a pastor. Is he preaching to you? And he said, well, a little. <laughs> and uh, so, so, you know, it was an interesting situation. And we got to the, the grapevine, Presby grapevine? Baylor, Baylor grapevine. And so within a matter of minutes when I got there, man, they're cutting my shirt off because they can't take it off and had a neck brace on or running me through x-rays, MRI, I mean, just the whole nine yards. Because the guy, when I'm 73, when they heard that, they said that they, they were kind of, I think they were a little bit scared. And um, anyway, um, they did all these tests on me and the doctor came back in. He said, well, Mr. Van Mikkel, you don't have any broken bones. Isn't that awesome? And, and uh, 
He said, but, he said your, I noticed your collarbone is broken. I thought, oh no, I broke my other collarbone. He said, no, that's an old injury, right? And I said, oh, yeah. And, uh, but there was no broken bones, just a minor concussion. But here's what I want to say. I felt the prayers of the saints. I felt your love. I felt your prayers. I am 100% convinced that your prayer saved me. I'm, I'm absolutely, because I know how, I know I was hurt bad. And when I broke my collarbone over here, this, this hurt worse than that, because I'm bruised from this shoulder clear down to this hip, clear across here, clear across my back. Nothing broken. I just scraped, big old scrape on my arm. And, and, and uh, yesterday it hit me. And I was laying there last night with Dorothy, and I said, no. This half of the bed could be empty. It was, I, I woke up to the fact that that's how serious this was. I realized what could have really, and I don't know how bad I was really hurt to begin, but I know this, you guys, your saints, the saint, prayer of the saints, I'm telling you right now, I'm here today because of that. And, and um, it's like I got a new relationship with the Lord greater than I've ever had before. It's just an amazing thing when you realize that God watched over me, watched over Emma. <laughs> wow, that's the main thing. And I realized how much my family was all there. I, I, I kept saying, I, I think I apologized for putting a hole in Nick's wall. I think I told him I'd come fix it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I, and, I sit, and I think I did ask how Emma was, I think. And uh, yeah, I said, I'm sorry, I messed up our party. And, but the family was there, this family was there. Family out there watching was there. And that was, I'm telling you, I'm a miracle today and I know it. And so yesterday I just, this, this, just kept hearing this in my heart. It's better than it was. So when I'm all healed up, I'm going to be better than I was. When we get the church all fixed up, this is going to be better than it was. And um, I would like to do, can we do this, Chris? Can we show that video right now? I want us to look at this video because I can't. I, yeah, Mike. Yeah, grab, grab a microphone. We're just talking this morning. So, before we show the video, hello. All right, um, Dorothy called me, and uh, I don't know. You called pretty quickly, I'm sure. And uh, it was like when she called me, it was not any scared. It was no fear. It just, just said, text it out to the group. So I text out to all of you to be in prayer. My phone blew up coming back. I mean, you guys all responded. I had more emojis that I didn't even know we had these many emojis. I mean, it was just everything. And everybody was, I mean, it was just, you guys were praying and praying. So I believe at that time, you know, when the centurion asked the servant to be healed at that very hour, yes. I believe it. Those prayers were, he was being healed. And I don't know if he was, they were in the ambulance or not. So I can't thank you enough because you responded. When you respond, it just comes back to me. It doesn't go to everybody. And it was just, I was, doo, 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 and I go, wow, I hope I don't have to pay for all of these. <laughs> uh, but, it, but it was awesome. So I just want to commend you because that was just a blessing. And, and uh, you guys have, um, I'm just, okay. you have uh, such compassion for our, for our pastor and his, and his lovely bride. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Ma. Just called the ambulance. As soon as I was off with the ambulance, I called Mike. So he was still on the floor. The ambulance hadn't even got there yet for so when I called. Amen. Amen. Tell them Andrew and Audrey. And here's the funny thing. Dorothy was taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is <I> saying. <laughs> I was thinking, what if I'd have died? She'd have had a photo. Here he is on the floor. Here he is when he passed. And, and you know, 
But she documented the whole thing. I'm laying down there. She's on the team. She's, she's, on, the, she's, on, the pro, she's on the production team. That's she's right. So she, no, she wanted no. to show those pictures this morning. I said, no, nah, I don't want everybody to see me laying on the floor and all. No, really. Uh, I was calm, cool, and collected. I was, you know, I just know God, and I know yeah. he's done it before, and he can do it again. And uh, I was calm when I called Mike, I believe, and said, hey, he did this. And so I was very calm. I was calm through the whole thing. So, and uh, so, because we, we know our God, and I had faith in him that you were going to be all right. Amen. 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 But it was very serious. It was more serious than I realized until yesterday. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. So family, we need each other. Amen. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew's text back and said, well, that's using your head. <laughs> but he did, after, that was after he found out I was okay, of course, he wasn't. But he said, well, tell Rich that's using his head. And so. And, that's what Audrey said. and Audrey said also something about my hard head or something, I don't yeah. know. But anyway, uh, what are we showing? Oh, I want to show a video of... of um, all the wonderful workers and all that you guys did and Dorothy and I came down here yesterday and I mean you were so just take a look at yourselves up here a minute
Debbie and Ross brought uh, Debbie and Ross. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> they, uh, uh, Robbie and Debbie brought chili for everybody. It was good to see you all over there sitting there breaking bread. We've seen the body of Christ in action. And so you guys are such a blessing. And, and I tell you that, uh, again, we have insurance, of course, and I don't know what the deductible is, but when it's all finished, it's going to be better than it was. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yes. And, and, um, and we, as, we as a body are going to be, we're already better than we were. I think this brought us together in an even more stronger, stronger way. And uh, so I know now how some of you who have been on the side where I was at, really bad hurting, what the prayers meant to you. And uh, some of you called me, I called some of you. Uh, uh, it's just been, uh, Mike and Tanya came over and took Dorothy out. The next day I didn't, couldn't go out yet. And then David and Linda took us out to eat and just to be with us. And so um, this has just brought me into a closer walk with the Lord, a greater love for the body of Christ and a greater knowing that this great glory revival is on the way at this house and, and uh, throughout the whole body of Christ. And, and um, we, we are just in an amazing, amazing time. And so I'm expecting uh, just greater things than we've ever experienced to come of the presence and power of God. And uh, I'm excited. I tell you, within the next two to three weeks, we're going to have that parking lot done. We'll have all that, everything rebuilt and better than it was. And, and, um, and I want to encourage you, all of you, and even people listening, whatever you've gone through the last few weeks and days and stuff, listen, folks, it's going to be better than it was. It's going to be better than it was. And relationships are being healed, restored. And I'm going to tell you something, whenever you go through anything in life, whether it be re marital relationships or friendships, whatever it is, when you get through it and let the grace of God work in your life, it'll be better than it was. Your marriage will be better. Your relationships will be better. Whatever it is, if it's a physical thing, your house is tore off, it's going to be better. And uh, I was thinking of Oscar, man, he was... With what three or four days without dialysis, didn't you? With your three and a half days because no power and, and how God sustained him, and finally he did it because he's got to stick around. We've got a new, new uh, kidney coming, maybe two of them. Amen. And, and um, Art Brown, we're standing with him, and, and you know, he just said, I am not going to, Jesus is going to heal me. And about a month, been almost a month now, I think, Mike. His pain just left. Yeah, we prayed for him that time. Remember, he came in, we all prayed for him. His pain left. He had no pain. And so God is so good. And they had to go stay with their daughter, Diana, because they were without electricity. And um, what a great way to start the year, huh? <laughs> but again, I'm like... All right, Lord, so much. That's enough historic uh, events. Let's get to the next one, the great glory of God. And let's let God come in our midst and, and heal and restore. And So, Linda, I want you to come up here. This is one of those moments when we were, in, I think, in silent at the church, weren't we? When the Lord gave this to you? Come up here. I want you to, God gave her a prophetic word for the church, and you can tell the whole thing. Got to hold this up here. You want me to hold it up there so you? <laughs> um, yeah, this was two weeks ago, and we, we worship was wonderful. I could really feel the presence of God. And I remember Pastor and Tanya, I could tell there was that quiet period of time. I knew they were waiting for a word. And I had been praying when we were worshiping, but I was praying in the spirit. And God had given me a word, but for whatever reason, I just didn't give it. But then he gave me some more the next day. So this is what he gave me. During praise and worship, 
My presence fills the house. My house of prayer. You just have to be patient with me because you know, this is kind of overwhelming. The people must desire to search and study the scriptures. The scriptures to be able to teach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of my son. So that's the core, that's the basis of everything. You must be ready to receive the thousands of people who will come to this place to hear my word and be saved. They will be drawn by my Holy Spirit having had the hearts, their hearts prepared to receive the knowledge of the truth. They will come from the highways and byways, those not wel welcomed by others, thieves, prostitutes, addicts of all kinds. The, and, uh, this part really, really reached into my heart. There will be those who worship other gods who are not gods, and realize they have needs that cannot be met by those that they have worshipped. Amen. Even these are being prepared by my Holy Spirit. So the next day, he gave me this, Romans 4. I know you're all familiar with this scripture, but obviously it needs to be spoken about Abraham when God gave him the promise of being the father of many nations and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead he was about 75 then I believe when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Therefore, it was imputed to him as righteousness. We cannot ever doubt God's promises, even in the face of things that we don't understand. Why is this happening? I asked him, I have to add this, and I felt like it was right. When I heard about Biden signing the new abortion laws back, and he gave me the picture of Biden standing in a pool of blood, and I know those were the, ba the blood of the babies that he has just thrown away. And he said that they are pouring on the wickedness on their own heads. Because I was so upset when I heard that, that I remember saying, Lord, you told me that you were gonna turn everything upright. How can this be? When are you gonna do this? And he said, when I am ready, more wickedness will be shown. I thought, my Jesus, how much more wickedness do we need to see? I don't even wanna hear about it. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to happen. So uh, with that, then I calmed down. I thought, okay. <laughs> so then seven days later after, after this word, lot, whenever I get a word from the Lord, I'm usually praising him in the spirit, and then I'm quiet, and that's when I hear it. He told me, get a piece of paper and pen. <laughs> He knew I wasn't going to remember this. Even as the snow falls in the east and the west, and now as it falls throughout the land, it is a cleansing. And for a short time, the wicked mouths are quiet. This is a time that my remnant are to pray aloud to me to save this land. My people who believe as the first church, the pilgrims came, were led here by my Holy Spirit to begin such a thing. Now is the time for my people to rise up and pray as never before. Yes. Not for a man, not for a man, 
but for my Holy Spirit to be poured out, <laughs> to be poured out in this land yes. and throughout the world. Yes. My power will be shown just as a small thing, just as Elijah prayed for the return of rain, the cloud barely seen in the distance, and the miracle of rain was soon manifested so will be the mighty works through the Holy Spirit will be manifested. There are small pockets of true believers all over this country and all over the earth that are fervently praying for this land and the earth to return to goodness and righteousness. Yes. My Holy Spirit is soon to be poured out in a mighty way do not stop calling out to me. Do not lose hope, but continue to stand in the face of evil. Evil has already been overcome through the blood of my son, the Holy One, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Hold that truth in your heart and never give up. I don't care what you see, because that's what the devil wants. He wants your faith to be consumed with the problems of the world, the, our personal problems that come up. He required so much of his people. I thanked him for all the prophets, all the people who have come before us, you know, in the Old Testament times and in the, in the New Testament. And today, there are truly prophets. I don't, excuse me, I don't care if it doesn't come out exactly right. I'm sure sometimes when he, when he gives me a word, it doesn't come out exactly the way, but it's coming through me, and I'm imperfect. But the gist of his word is you never give up. Never. Amen. Ever. Let me encourage you when you pray at home, pray in the spirit. Go in a room. David and I pray separately. We also pray together. But I find that when I'm praying in the spirit, I feel really comfortable to receive. You know, I ask him, I asked him to please open up the heart of the people in this church to be able to receive more of what the Holy Spirit was given to us, which is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to use those words. So there's life in the words, life in his blood, life in the resurrection. And that's what our purpose is here, is to welcome the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When Rich had that accident, I was praying for him and I said to the Lord, Lord, how can we pray for others, people who will be drawn here for healing, for, for miracles, for believing, if we can't pray for our own, we should be able to see that and hear that in every single one of us. Don't ever doubt that the Holy Spirit wasn't put in you. Put in you for a purpose. Yes. You know, rejoice in that. You have been chosen. And there's people like us all over the land, all over the world in other yes. countries because they know what starts here in this land is spread throughout the whole world. Mm -hmm. So it would be God's grace and mercy and reason for us to be here. So don't give up. And another thing that I saw, it just brought tears to my eyes and showed all of you that helped out the other day with all the flooding. This is what the scripture meant when it said, they will, they will know you by the love that you show for one another. Yes. That was what was displayed. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's all I have. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? I also want to say that uh, our leadership, Pastor Mike and Tanya and Walt and Chris, and, and you know, they just mobilized all of this. And Michael Ward was there, and Nick was up here yesterday with the vacuum. I saw him. But, you know, guys, we have great leadership in this church. And they love you. They absolutely love you. And, and 
I, I can't commend them enough, especially Pastor Mike. He just steps right in there and all of them. And, and uh, Chris just put all this together so you could actually see what took place. And, and um, thank you, thank you. I, I tell you what, they are so awesome. And uh, so this is a great day. I don't know about you, but man, I, I just feel like God, this is something already, revival's already taken place. And uh, I will tell you this, America will be better than it was. You watch, when God's through with it, it'll be better than it was. And, and uh, we're gonna see a great day. And, and here's the exhortation, Just keep praying and releasing the Holy Spirit. And Because we're not going back to any type of normal, we're gonna go to greater things. It's gonna be greater than it was. We're going to see those multitudes come and the people that nobody else wants. That's been a, years ago, the Lord showed Nick a, a city of refuge. And it was all about those kind of people coming that nobody else wanted them. But to see them transformed, God takes the foolish things of the world, that ought to encourage all of us and confounds the wisdom of man. So we're all a bunch of foolish people in the eyes of the world. But in the eyes of God, we're his children. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Praise God. And so God is awesome. I, I'm just, I am so encouraged and just um, glad to be on earth. And <laughs> glad to be completely whole other than a few bruises and they'll, they'll heal up. And um, you guys are amazing. You're just amazing, amazing, amazing. So get ready, get ready, get ready because the best is yet to come like Pastor Bob Nichols always said. Amen. Well, let's, uh, uh, I guess we're going to do, let's receive an offering. How's that sound? And, and uh, if you need an offering, an envelope, the ushers will get you one. Just uh, lift your hands and, and um, if you're giving cash. Yes. Sure. You got to come where we can hear it, though. Yeah, just go ahead and pass that around if you're giving an offering. And, and uh, praise God. Of course, we were involved in the rolling blackout. Yeah, did I turn That's it off? Let me turn it off. Yeah, I think I turned it off. There you are. Of course, we had the rolling blackout. And so, and that started, I guess it was Monday. And it finally ended Wednesday evening. Of course, I had my paper because I wanted a document of when it was going off and on because it gives you that time period of, okay, I can use the stove right quick or I can go do something. And so Thursday morning during my quiet time, I said, Lord, we're going to have a feast. Just like now the lights are on, everything's going, want to prepare food and so forth. And the Lord says, a continual feast. Hmm. And hmm. I said, where is that in Scripture? And so, of course, I look it up, and he points me to Proverbs 15, 15. Mm. It says, all the days of the desponding and afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and forebodings. Forebodings meaning feeling of something bad's going to happen. And he says, but he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. Amen. 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 Regardless. Amen. And it just goes back to this what Pastor says, continuously feeding yourself daily with this word. Amen. Because no matter what happens, you'll continue to have a continual feast. So, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You know, the scripture says that the word of God will be the stability of our time. And so praise God, praise God. 